If you want people to believe your ideas, they have to be first manifested into reality. I am a 42 year old innovator who has been doing research and development in robotics for the last 22 years. In these 22 years, I have created 28 fully functional life-size prototypes like these. It might sound a bit unrealistic, but all this was done single-handedly till the year 2018, that too, with the most basic tools and equipments. After 2018, I finally had the business to form the team of engineers and technicians who could take this thing to another level. But before that, I would like you to introduce to Indro 5.0, my latest humanoid robot. What is your name? My name is Indro. What are your applications? I have a problem to get information about this. Sorry. What are your applications? I can be used for security, surveillance, teaching, doing predetermined tasks. Once fully developed, I will be capable of doing predetermined tasks, like making tea coffee, beverages. I will also be able to give human beings a physiotherapy. You can deploy me in places which are not suitable for human beings. For example, places with high level of radiation, chemical plants, gas plants, etc. What are your technical specifications? Hi, my name is Indro 5.0, the humanoid robot of India. As of now, I am a semi-autonomous humanoid in development phase, where only eight of my axis, or in simple words, my eight joints are active. With degrees of freedom similar to a human being, I will be a 28-axis autonomous humanoid robot. Once I am fully developed, I stand 5.8 feet tall and weigh approximately 58 kilograms. My software is developed on Python programming, which is updated on regular intervals by my developer. I am integrated with microcomputers, microcontrollers, sensors, chips, boards, drivers, motor controllers, cameras, microphones and servo motors with feedback. I can maneuver on flat surface. I can be IoT controlled. I can carry a maximum payload of 120 kilograms on my rover. I can pick and place objects weighing one kilogram with my arm with my new precision. I am equipped with fifth generation servo motors, which are custom developed in Indro Robotech Labs. The torque for my servo motors range from 20 kilograms per centimeters to 1400 kilograms per centimeters. So that was Indro. Well, it is still under development. Once fully developed, that was just a trailer, picture of the hai. So, in these 22 years of research, I have spent a considerable amount of time, energy and money to achieve something what I call as my robotech dream. In these 22 years, I have achieved the skills, knowledge and experience, which is my biggest asset. So I'll be sharing a few aspects of my journey which will give you an idea about how I was able to achieve this. This journey started 28 years ago when a 14 year old boy from a middle class family dreamed of making robots. I was born in 1980. So by the time I was 9 years old, that is in the year 1989, that was the very first time I was introduced to robots. That too through a TV series that used to be aired on our black and white television on Doordarshan. I excavated parts from old cassette players and video players and I started making small mechanical robots that could hop and crawl on the floor. Well technically you cannot call them robots but that is all I could do with the kind of resources I had in the 90s. By the time I was 14 years old, I was dead sure in my mind that I will be making robots for the rest of my life. I had decided my career then. I even decided the name of my company when I was 14 years old 
which is actually the name of my company today. In 1994, internet was not easily available for the common people. Also, we did not have Google.com then. So my Google.com was my late father, Mr. Vasudev Tagruji Hulamne. My father was a versatile reader, an intelligent person, and the best teacher I could ever know. I must have asked him a million questions, and he must have answered almost every one of them. Sometimes if he did not have the answer, he would get back to me with an answer, but he made sure that he answered every single question that I asked him. He never got annoyed with the never-ending list of questions that I asked him. In fact, he loved that I had so many questions to ask. My robotic dream and journey would have never been possible without him. He was also a bit worried about my over-obsession for robotics, as it was taking a toll on my academics. It was not that I did not like to study, but I was studying books that were not in context with my academics. I used to books that were related to the science and technology in my school laboratory, in school library, I'm sorry. Somehow I graduated and I finished my computer engineering from a private institute. After that I did my designing courses. Then I joined a multinational company where I worked for a few years. But in this period, I could hardly get any time for my research. So I decided to quit the job and I started my own venture. The business went well and I finally had the time and resources to restart my research. So by the year 2008, I had 48 innovations ready on the paper. Now I had to select a design from that list of 48 innovations which I could manifest into reality. Because I was very sure that unless I do not create a fully functional prototype like this from my designs, nobody was going to believe in my designs. So I selected the most complicated design from that list of 48 innovations which was but obviously the humanoid robot. In 2008, when I finally started building the humanoid robot, that's when I realized that I had to be something more than just an innovator. Usually, to build a humanoid robot, you need a team of minimum 8 to 10 people, that too, with different set of expertise and knowledge. You also need a considerable amount of monetary funds and state-of-art equipments and machinery. But in my case, I did not have any of these things. But instead of complaining about the so many things that I did not have, I just focused on whatever little I had and I got started. After two years of hard work, that is from 2008 to 2009, all I had got was failure. But I did not stop there. I made a list of things that went wrong and I gave my second attempt. That was from 2010 to 2011. After two more years of hard work, I failed again. I knew it was not going to be an easy task. So I decided to give another attempt, which was going to be my third attempt. So from 2012 to 2013, I gave my third attempt and guess what happened this time? Well, I failed again. Yes, I failed for the third time in a row. Six years of failure, six years of sweat, blood, energy, money, invested. Yes, I said invested, not wasted. Because these six years had taught me the best lessons of my life. Which is why I believe that there is no better teacher than trial and error. Trying and failing. With every failed attempt, I had come closer to my desired design. So when I had failed for the third time, I was very close to my desired design. Which is why I was sure that my fourth attempt was going to be a successful one. 
But after six years of trial and error, I had exhausted almost all my savings. Which is why I decided to take a year-long break in which I could save the funds which was needed to build the humanoid robot. But then suddenly I was going to face the most challenging part of my journey. Guess what? I was going to get married. <laughs> my mom had given me a deadline that I, was, I had to get married by the end of the year and to which I had no option but to say yes. Now comes the funny part of my journey. It was going to be an arranged marriage. <laughs> and I had not uttered a single word about my research and development to my going to be wife. Because I was not sure how she would react to this whole fact that I was a researcher. You know, people have these different opinions about researcher. Pablo Sutta, you know, whatever. So finally on the day when she came to my house as my wedded wife, just before that, I had packed all my tools, equipments and prototypes in different boxes and I kept them in my spare bedroom, which was also my makeshift laboratory at that time, in-house laboratory. So after 15-20 days, my wife got suspicious about what was there in those boxes. She wanted to know what was there in those boxes. So she came to me and she said that I want to know right now that what's there in those boxes. So finally it was time to spill the beans. I took a deep breath and I opened one of the boxes which had the rover like this of my going to be humanoid robot. I told my wife to stand on it and I powered it on and I gave her a nice small ride all over my house. It was something like a Segway ride. You get it? So she was so excited because she had never experienced something like this before. She said that what is this thing to which I told her that I am planning to build a six and a half feet tall humanoid robot over this rover which will have 48 degrees of freedom and which will be able to do maneuvers just like a human being. She just looked at me and said then what are you waiting for? I am sure you can do this. I can't tell you how relieved and excited I was to get a green signal from my better half. 14 months after that, on May 2016, our first baby, Indro the Humanoid Robot, was born. That was our first baby. So Indro was all over the news channels, newspapers, I was doing interviews, I was doing live shows, I was doing radio shows. All that years of hard work had finally paid off. But then I remembered APJ Abdul Kalam sir's words that you should not rest after your first victory or else people will think it was mere good luck. So I built Indro 2.0. After that I built Indro 3.0 which was a much more advanced humanoid robot. Indro 3.0 was selected in the, top, in the list of top 5 most advanced humanoid robots of India. It was exhibited in almost every major IIT and NID institute in India. By this time, I had mastered the recipe of making robots and I was making robots in record breaking time. The journey is still on because innovation is a continuous process. What is latest today is outdated in a matter of few months. So I will keep on innovating and prototyping till my time comes. In the end, I would just like to give a small word of advice to our younger generation. I would like to tell them that do not cry or complain about the things that you do not have. Instead, just focus on whatever you little you have and get started with your journey of manifesting your ideas into reality. Because unless you are not going to manifest your ideas into reality, no one will believe in your ideas. Also, once you reach a certain point of success, contribute your skills for the betterment of our country. Thank you for hearing me out.